Hey, what's going on guys? Been a couple days and so much has happened. Uh, aside from tons of orders running through the shop, which thank you for that. Um, I sold the Jetta and I was supposed to put that money into some of the existing projects, but I have some impulse control issues and I went and bought another car. So I figured I'd share its glory with you and give you an idea of just how bad it is and what it needs and what we're going to do to it over the next couple months to try and make it fun and drivable. So without any further ado, let's uh, take you out here and show you. So yeah, here it is. 94 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. Um, yeah, well, in photos and standing far enough away, it looks pretty decent. However, it's not. <laughs> it is, uh, it's pretty much rough all over. So I'll go ahead and give you a quick Quick tour. Never had a lowrider before, and certainly nothing on hydraulics. So when it came available, I figured it was worth grabbing and learning a little bit more about uh, about that lifestyle. So here it is. Let me show you the worst of it first. That's probably <laughs> most of the suspension, as you can see been leaking oil all over the driveway for the past couple days since it got dropped off. Oh boy. All right, so eight batteries, two pumps, three dumps, one pro hopper, one high-low. That's fine. I actually have two more pro hopper pumps coming to me as soon as I go pick them up, and I think we're going to end up well, I'll go into details here soon enough. Um, so yeah, basically in the configuration it has right now, uh, you can lift the front, lift the rear, and then you can drop each rear individually. So good for doing a, uh, a rolling three wheel or uh, you know, trying to hit a half-assed side. There's a sub box kind of just stuck back here with a single DD-10. Um, yeah, and as you can see, tons and tons of leaky hydraulic stuff. So you can see for sure that this line leaks. It's been spraying oil on the underside of the trunk. I'm sure there's other fittings back here that leak. Uh, strokes coming up through the floor there and there. And then the front line runs through that same hole in the floor up to the front. So the good news is the pumps are decent. The batteries are all good. Uh, the battery rack seems to be holding up. So we'll see if maybe we can just rework it a little bit and make it a little safer and stronger. So yeah, it's got good bones, question mark. <laughs> all right, let's go to the interior a little bit. Don't worry about all the missing trim and emblems and stuff. We'll get to that eventually. All right. So as far as interior goes, it looks like someone reupholstered it at some point. It did an okay job at it. It's decent. Uh, you can see the front doors have broken trim. So we'll be hunting that stuff down. Dash is missing a few pieces. When they rewrapped it, it looks like a couple, a couple things didn't go back on. And then this is the... Uh, B pillar interior trim. So I'm gonna get some clips and figure out how to reattach that properly. But yeah, aside from just being dirty and a little unloved, it's uh it's mostly there. Um yeah. We've got uh 
some missing trim and some runs in the paint and I don't know what's going on with the hood emblem but that's not staying and the wheels are starting to show their age and the tires are definitely beat up so we've got replacements on the way for them but yeah that's uh that's it in a nutshell let me hook it up real quick and I'll show you how it works. Let me see if I can do this one-handed without catching it on fire. One eternity later. I can't, hang tight. There we go, all right. So that's the, the safety ground strap. So you see it just hangs out of the trunk like that. And if something decides to catch on fire because there's a whole bunch of electricity and a whole bunch of oil sitting inside an enclosed part of the vehicle you pull that and hope for the best all right so what we've got i think we're still kind of digging in and learning as we go but we've got four switches which i think are front up and down rear up and down and then these two if you hit them up they just lift both rears because there's just the one pump feeding them and then you can hit each one individually to dump one of the rear corners. So you can see there it is. And that's basically what we get. Let me roll the window down here. I can hit some switches from outside. super cold so that I think the fluid doesn't flow through the dumps quite as well as it normally would but Seller was nice enough to leave an E40 CD in here. So we'll probably get a nice little uh, copyright strike or something, but let me turn that off. So yeah, you can see from here, upper arms are extended. Someone put some chrome parts on there at some point. Big, long, hefty coils, I think two ton, and uh, absolutely no frame reinforcement that I've been able to find. All right, so let's talk about plans for this thing. Um, it runs all right, runs and drives okay. Um, needs an alignment, which I think is just a never ending battle when you're talking about adjustable suspension like this. Um, but I'll get it as close as I can and try and make sure nothing's broken or worn out at least. Um, paint is what it is. It's going to stay rough. I'll keep hunting down trim pieces as they come available on eBay and such, but I think uh, that's going to be a is what it is kind of deal too. Uh, clean the interior, clean the exterior, get some new tires on it like now. And, uh, and then main focus is going to be yank everything out of that trunk. Um, rewire, replumb, and while it's apart, a uh, buddy in California gave me some information on where these need reinforcing to handle a standing three wheel without buckling the, uh, the quarter panels. So I think we'll bridge the, uh, the rear frame uh, on the inside, reinforce it over the, uh, the rear axle, and, uh, and then take those other two Pro Harper pumps and make it a three pump setup with the eight batteries. So each rear will have its own pump and then the front will have a pump uh, for both fronts. And uh, that'll let us basically lift one rear corner individually, which should make it stand up on three, which I think would be pretty neat. But yeah, that's, that's basically it. I'll, uh, I'll post a little more once I get the trunk torn apart and 
go over some of how these things are plumbed and wired. I'm kind of learning as I go, but be happy to take you guys along on the journey if you want to learn. So stay tuned and we'll try and sneak this project in among all the others. I'm pretty excited about this one, so it's probably going to sneak a little ahead at least until we get it to a drivable state. So anywho, thank you for watching and we'll be back soon, I hope.